I don't know. I'm on. Good morning, Turning Point. I always say this, and it bears saying again whenever I'm in this position. I do not take it a light thing to be before God's people. For God to use me to talk to his people, it humbles me every time. It humbles me because of who our God is. Now, I know he used people. I know he does. But when he uses me, it's mind-blowing. I'm telling you it is. It's, it's just mind-blowing. The pastor said something earlier that, you know, my motto is, I tell you all the time, that God loves Tommy Anthony Daniels. He loves him some Tommy. But you know what? I love him too. And I found out that our love is a force. I didn't know it was a force before. Yeah. It's a force. It God loving me, me loving him is a force. Yeah. And, and, and since it is a force, the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Someone says that I push, some preachers say they push back against the kingdom of darkness. No, I advance. I advance against the kingdom of darkness. I bring the light. The pastor prayed about, he said, we're salt, but we're light. We bring the light. If you are born again, you are a child of the light. You bring the light. So I love it. I tell you, I love being born again. Greatest thing that ever happened to me is to be born again from above. So with that being said, I'm going to get to my assignment. The last three weeks has just been phenomenal for me. Yeah. Minister Eddie came. <laughs> Minister Eddie, he talked about not being captivated by our captivity. When you're going through captivity, you don't have to be captivated in your mind. So you see, because just because you're going through it doesn't mean you have to remain there. And we're all, somebody, every, everybody in here is going through something. I don't care who you are. You're going through something. And, but that doesn't mean that God isn't for you. That doesn't mean that you're not coming out of it. I'm telling you that today because, you know, somebody today, it, it needs a healing in their body. Somebody today huh, needs a financial blessing. Somebody today needs some soundness in their mind. Somebody today needs some peace. On Tuesday nights, the pastor brings, uh, I, I, I got to put this plug in. Okay, I got to put this plug in. If you're missing Tuesday night, yes. you're missing it. Amen. I love Sunday, but Tuesday night is, is the word of God preached in such a way that it impacts my soul. It makes a difference. I go home marveled, get up on Wednesday, have to pray about what I heard because it's just that awesome. So I got to put that plug in there for Tuesday night. You ain't coming on Tuesday night. I, I, I'm telling you, you're really missing out on what the Holy Spirit is doing for those who come out, for those who come out. But the pastor said something in his book last Tuesday. He says, just because you're experiencing lack, you don't have to fear it. That blew me away because, see, I associated experiencing it with fearing it. Come on now. So I'm saying today, 
just because your body has been diagnosed with something doesn't mean you have to fear it. You don't have to. Just because the doctor gives you a report doesn't mean you have to believe that report. So let me, before I read the scripture, let me do this. I have to give honor to my pastor, his family, his wife, his children. I have to give honor today to the sister pastor, Pastor Bones and his household. And of course, last but not least, I have to give honor to my sister, my wife. Yes, yes, yes. She's the well I drink from. <laughs> you understand me? You understand me? That's where I get my water from. So, honey, I love you. Honey, I love you. And uh, I give honor to you, Turning Point, and visitors. We have a, some, I have some visitors who came all the way from North Carolina, so I have to mention them. They're our good friends, Dave and Janice Mark. They're sitting back there in the back. I, I love them so. They've been good friends to us. So turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah 53. And after we go to Isaiah 53, we're going to go to John chapter 6, uh, starting at uh, verse 29. But let's go here first. My wife tells me, she says, Tommy, you don't wait for everybody to get it. You start reading before everybody gets there. So let's, let's stand for the word of God, please, if you are able to stand. Everybody got to say amen? Amen. He says, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. Mm. Who has believed? I want you to put, well, you ain't just put it in your mind, believed. We're going to talk about that word believed in a minute. Now let's go to John chapter 6. Verse 26, starting at verse 26. Now, all of you bar Bible scholars, you know that this is where Jesus had fed to 5,000. The people thought, you know what? He's feeding us. Let's go find him again. Let's go look for him because, you know, he's going to put something in our bellies. But Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures for, to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. I like that. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them and said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We stand in your presence today. For you have sent your word, holy God, and we to he, for us to hear God and obey. God, we commend this service over to now your spirit. Holy Spirit, you, the service is yours. You do the will of the Father. We thank you now for what we will hear. Thank you for massaging our hearts with this word, God, and causing us, holy God, to live a life worthy of you, well-pleasing, bearing fruit that brings glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now, Isaiah said, who has believed our report? Now, church... Some of you guys probably heard me say that if you came on Tuesday night, you're going to know I'm, you're going to, you've heard me say this. You're going to hear, hear it again. Ever since I've been born again, I've sought to know how to live according to the kingdom of God. You see, when I first got born again, I started living by religious ways. 
I didn't know any better. I didn't know any different. You know, I, it's what I heard, you know, just so, so I didn't know. But what I found out is those religious ways wasn't working. I, I wasn't receiving the promises of God that I thought I should be receiving. God said it. I, you know, why? And I asked, what's the struggle? Why am I struggling? And I found out, you know what? I'm not even asking God. I just assume I'm going to do something because I heard some pastor say that's to do. And I found out that that wasn't working for me. So I had to learn, I had to go to God and ask. I had to go to God, like faith. I heard people say, have faith, brother. What's that? What's faith? You know, and I'll be honest with you, I thought faith was, faith was like, you know, some pixie dust that, you know, that somebody sprinkled on you. Have faith. But I come to find out that that wasn't true. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, my mind has to be marked. And I, and I found that to be scriptural because that's what God did with Abraham. What God did with Abraham, Abraham says, so how will I know that we're inherit this land? He said, God says, go get me a heifer. Go get me a sheep. Go get me some birds. He marked his thinking. So likewise, my thinking had to be marked because, you know, what's faith? I'm like, man, I don't understand it. What's faith? You know, see, it's just, just, it's just a word. What is it? But so I went to God. And he gave me this definition. Now, this definition is mine. You can use it if you want to, but this, this is mine. I went to God and I got it for myself because I, my mind had to be marked. If I'm going to say I live by faith, what does that mean to me? And he said, he said, Holy Spirit says to me, faith is having confidence in the word of God to the point that you act up on that word because it is God's word. That's what I learned what faith was. In other words, that's a fancy way of saying if God said it is so. Bottom line. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but God said it is so. Likewise, believe. I hear people say, I believe. I believe. I said it. I believe. I ask people today, what, what does it mean when you say you believe? Someone says, well, it's trust, and, that, and that's true. But I had, to, I had to go get what I perceived was a biblical, biblical definition for the word. And I don't mean I looked it up in the concordance. I, I allowed the Holy Spirit to minister to me. I allowed the Holy Spirit to minister to me. So... He said to me, he said, believing is selling it forever to be true in your heart. What God has said according to his word. So belief to me is I have to sell it forever that this is true in my heart. In my heart. Not in my mind but it's in my heart. Because if it's in my heart, I won't waver. If it's in your mind, you'll waver. Yeah, that's right, that's but I found out that if it's in my heart, it will, I won't waver. So likewise, my assignment today is to talk to you about Jesus. Because we read in John uh, six, that here's the works of God, that you believe on him whom God has sent. That's the works of God. Now, when religion has taught us works is going and working physically with our hands, doing a lot of things in the ministry, in the church. Well, you know what? I cut the yard. I come down and I do this for the church. But what do you believe about God in your heart? What's in your heart concerning God? 
you know, I'll tell you a story, and you will hear a quite a, well, you're going to hear quite a few, but you will hear some today, because I kind of, that's kind of how it worked. Kenneth E. Hagen, senior, uh, I read a book by him, and he was talking about his ministry. And he talked about this one lady who uh, was in the church every day. Church opens, she's there. Whatever's going on, she's there. Then he talks about a family who rarely came to church. They come, rarely came. But whenever they were sick, they called for him to come. He would go out to their house, and he would lay hands on them, and they'd get healed. But this lady always seemed to be sick. But yet she was in the church Every time the door opened, every time the door or whatever was going on, she was a part of it. He said he went to God and tried to find out what's the deal. This woman is faithful. And God said to him that she thinks she deserves it. She thinks she deserves to be healed. She's worked her way into healing. You can't work your way into healing with God. Healing comes from the righteousness of God. It's only by righteousness are you healed. So this other family, they just believed God's word. That if you call for the elders of the church... And allow him to lay hands on you. The prayer of faith to heal you. That's what they believed. And they got healed every time. So look, I'm talking about Jesus today because in, in this study, when the pastor first told me I had to do this. Now, for me, the pastor told me way back in, <laughs> way back in May. <laughs> Okay, I got to thinking, oh, God, what am I going to say? What am I going to talk about? But, but, in, but, but, but while studying this, I, I found out of something about Jesus that I'm going to share with you. It just blew my mind. It really did. I knew him as Savior. I knew him as my deliverer. I knew him as my redeemer. But I didn't know he was a good neighbor. I didn't know he was a good neighbor until the Holy Spirit made me realize he's a good neighbor. You see, you guys know the story, but see, I fell among thieves. I got injured. I was left for dead. Now, I'm not talking physically. I'm talking just living in this world. I fell among thieves. I got injured. I got left for dead. And you know, some people came along and they looked at me and they said, well, it's your fault. That was a man who came along, looked at the man and said, it's your fault. Some came along, knew it wasn't my fault, but didn't want to get involved, so they crossed to the other side of the road. But then came this man called Jesus. He came to me when I was yet dead in my sin. He dressed my wounds. He poured oil on me. He didn't put me on his own donkey. He put me on his back, took me to the end, dressed me, took care of me, and said to the innkeeper, who is the Holy Ghost, take care of him till I come back. I'm coming back for him. Take care of him till I get there. I didn't know he was a neighbor like that. I saw him as all those other things, but he's my neighbor today. When I was hurt, when I was down, when I didn't know what to do or where to go, Jesus was my neighbor. He's your neighbor today. I don't know what you are going through, what's happening with you, but I can tell you this. Excuse me. Jesus is your way. Jesus is the way. Now, Jesus went about, that's only one message that Jesus taught. That's only one. I don't know, I don't know, everybody, you know, you know, everything else is just he's telling you how to do it. 
But the one message he taught was, one message he preached every way went was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to turn around, go the other way, change the way you think. Because if you don't change the way you think, the kingdom of heaven won't come up on you. You will never experience what I brought to you. So today, you and I, we don't preach that the kingdom of heaven has come. We preach Jesus. That's it. Jesus. All the other messages is found in this, Jesus. Brother Eddie talked about not being captivated by your captivity. Brother Warren talked about God preparing a table before us, in front of, before us in front of our enemies. He talked about our cup overflowing. And he, really, he said that when our cup overflows, it affects everybody else around us. You see, you, you want your cup to overflow because, see, someone says that, cup, that, that jar is full. That jar isn't full until it's overflowing. Once it's overflowing, then it's full. And then it, then it affects everything else around it. Deacon Ron, Deacon Ron, my good friend and brother, he brought the message of why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why we need to be immersed by the Spirit of the living God. But for but so to, today, for me, I have to seal it with this. All of this is only possible through Jesus Christ. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't believe Jesus, if you don't settle what he said forever to be true in your heart, then you will continue to be in the way that you are, God, whatever it is. Whatever situation, whatever is going on, that's not God-like. It's only through Jesus when you make your way out. I don't care if you are sick. I don't care if everybody is against you. It just doesn't matter. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way you're going to receive anything from God is through Jesus. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to say something that may challenge you, may not, may make you angry, I don't know. People say that God's love is unconditional. And it is. God's, God's love is unconditional. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit got together. That love is unconditional. But Jesus said the Father's love is conditional. Come on, sir. Come on now. Come he, on said, now. he said, if you, don't love, if you don't love and obey me, the Father won't love Come on you. Now. now, we're talking about something different. Yeah. We're, not, we're, not just, we're talking about being in the family. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not born again, you're not in the family. Yeah. Yeah. You can't call God Father unless you're born again. Now, what does born again mean? It means to be born from above, born from the Spirit of God. So to be in this family, the family of the living God, you must be born again. Now, if you are born again, you have certain privileges. And the problem is most people don't know that they got privileges. They just don't know. You know I, I didn't know. I, 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 I didn't know. I, I thought, you know, I got to struggle to get along. You know, that, what, what's the song? Just so hard to get along. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountains. Now, don't get me wrong. Those are, those are songs that I know the people were going through and they felt that's the way it was. But what they didn't know is that Jesus had took it off. Oh, yeah. Jesus already climbed that rough side of the mountain. 
Jesus already took it on. So we don't have to, it don't have to be hard to get along. Jesus came, and I said this on Tuesday night. Jesus came, and this is what he came to do. He came so we can learn how to breathe easy. You understand what I'm saying? When you're struggling, when you don't know what to do, you ain't breathing easy. Ain't nothing calm about you breathing. Nothing at all. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke up on you. Up on you. Learn of me. Now let me tell you about the yoke. When they wanted to train a young oxen how to pull a cart, they, they, they yoked him to a senior oxen, a, a seasoned oxen who know how to pull their cart, know how to pull the cart. So, 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 the, so the oxen knew the commands, which way to go. So he taught the younger one. Jesus Christ said, link up to me. I know where to go. I know how to get to the Father. I know how to get what you need. Come on and you link up with me. Get yoked up with me. Because when you get yoked up with me, I'll show you how to breathe easy. I'll show you how to pull the cart and it won't be so heavy. I tell you, Jesus is a good Savior. He's a good God. And I'm so glad that he accepted me and you as his, as the one he chose and accepted in the beloved. Now, I'm not going to be as, as my pastor Bones would say. I love this man. I ain't going to be before you long. But one thing I did want to show you as we're talking about Jesus is this. I told you before, you know, I thought being born again was just so I could get to heaven. I thought that was the reason. And that's good. But being born again also was for heaven to come to me. For heaven to come to me and to be in me. To be a representative of the kingdom of God. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to get to the scripture, but what, what does that mean? I learned something from, from Pastor Miles from Rome. And he talked about how when the when, when British came to the, uh, the Bahamas, they, they, they changed everything around. They, they made them start wearing loose short shorts. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they made them start having tea time. They changed the colors of the buildings. And, you know, they started driving on the left. I don't know if they were driving in or not, but they had to drive on the left. So, so you know, so, and, and what they did is they set a governor over the Bahamas to teach the people how to, how to live the, the life that the English people lived. Now, since I've been born again, since I've been invaded by the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God has come into me. The Holy Spirit is the governor of the colony of me. You understand what I'm saying? It's him who teaches me how to live. It's him who shows me the way of the kingdom. It's him who shows me how to walk, how to talk. So when you look at me, you see the kingdom of God. But God, and then if you go to heaven, you'll see me. And when you go to me, you see heaven. Because that's what the Holy Spirit has came to do to usher us into that place. Yes. That's one of the reasons Jesus Christ came. I tell you, I tell you that. But the other reason he came, and I would like for you to turn with me to Isaiah 43. Uh, uh, let me get that, Isaiah 43. And let me find it. Oh, there it is. 43 and 10. It says, uh, say, let me know when you got it. Amen. Amen. You are my witnesses, said the Lord, 
and my servant whom I have chosen. Listen, this is why I chose him. That you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there is no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. Besides me there is no Savior. There is no Savior. Jesus came that we may know the Father, we may believe the Father, and we may understand that there's no other but Him. Jesus came for that reason, to, so that we may be His witnesses in the earth. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you who God has called us to be. Yeah. Yeah. But unless you believe, unless you sell it forever to be true in your heart, mm -hmm. what God has said, then it can always be a doubt. Someone can come along, and, well, the enemy, the Bible says the enemy comes along and steals the word, but someone can come along and convince you of something else. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. Jesus came that we, may have, that we may have life, abundant life. He came for that reason. So, you know, I keep harking on this because I, I hear this. If you're sick in your body, first of all, I will, I, we have to learn how to speak. Amen. You see, someone says, I'm sick. No, your body has been diagnosed with sickness. Right. You are not sick. That's right. If you are born again, your spirit is not sick. Right. It's not sick. Right. If your physical house have a, have a roof leak, you don't say, I have a roof leak. You say, my, 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 my roof is leaking in my house. Right. You don't say, I have a roof leak. Right. Now, I'm listening to, listen, so I had to learn, too, to learn how to talk, to learn how to speak. See, because the enemy, that's how the enemy comes to get us to think and speak a certain way. And, and then we, we, we cause the thing to come up on us and to remain up on us because we don't know what to say. And the reason why we don't know what to say and we take no note of what to say is because we don't understand who we are as human beings, as man. What God has created us to be. He said, let us make man in our own image. In other words, he said, let us make another speaking spirit because the spirit speaks. And I'm telling you today that if you don't know how to talk, if you don't know how to speak, if you don't know how to exhale, if you don't know how to breathe out, then when you breathe out, you're going to give life to something you don't want to give life to. And this is what happens. We give life to something, then we wonder why it ain't happening. How come it's so bad for me? But I had to learn that I had to learn how to talk, kingdom talk. I had to learn how to talk like God talk. God, talk, God talks in a way that he's not defeated. He's not overcome. Ah. I meant to tell y'all I had a disclaimer before I started. I may get a little excited. I may get a little excited. I'm sorry if I do. I can't help it. I'm telling you why I can't help it. Because God is for me. And let me tell you something. Not only is he for me, God is in me. Now listen to me. I don't mean God is in me as far as, you know, I'm, I hear people saying I'm connected to God. I'm connected to God. Well, see, you can get disconnected from God if you're connected to God. Now let me tell you something. I'm intertwined with God. I'm intertwined with him. You know, you can't tell where God is and I begin. You can't tell where I end and God begin. You see, you know, I'm not just connected to God. God, I'm intertwined with him. He and I are one. You understand? And you and he are one. 
I say sometimes that uh, prayer is, I have to learn that prayer is coming into agreement with God. And I said that for a while until the Holy Spirit made me understand that I really didn't understand what that meant. Coming into agreement with God. See, I saw it this way. Two people coming along and just shaking hands and agreeing. Mm -hmm. No. No. I'm intertwined with God. So just like when Elijah said it wasn't going to rain, yeah, yeah. we don't find any place where it says he went and prayed and God told him to go say it ain't going to rain. He just knew the heart of God, and so he said, so it ain't going to rain. You see, he was praying even then. See, I pray even when I'm not on my knees. Because whenever I come into agreement with God, whenever, whenever God is talking to me, talking to me, because we're one, it's prayer just as well. See, we've, we've associated prayer with just doing this. Uh, just, but no, 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 no. If you are in God and God is in you, the very thoughts that you have are intertwined. So God, so that's why he say, don't grieve my spirit because see my spirit is in you and he wants you to come into agreement with what he's doing I've been entwined with God and so are you but it's only through Jesus Christ you can't do any of this without acknowledging Jesus now I'm going to tell you something I love Jesus I'm just going to be honest with you. I love, I love Jesus. Jesus is my master. Now, I know that sounds rough to somebody who say that, but he's my master. When you say Jesus Christ is Lord, you're saying he is my owner. He owns me. I can't have a thought separated from him. I no longer have a right to my own so-called will. No, 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 no. Everything that Jesus says that I am, I am. Everything he tells me not to do, I'm not supposed to do. I tell you, but let me tell you about Jesus. He's a good master. <laughs> Whoever heard of a master laying his life down for the slave? Whoever heard of that? My God. Whoever heard of the master giving, giving his body for meat to the slave? Whoever heard of that? What kind of master is this? It's the one that you should run to. It's the one that you should call upon. It's the one that you should believe. It's the one that you should trust. It's the one that you should worship. Ah, it's the one that you ought to be glad in because he's a good master. My God, he's a good master. He's a good master. So this Jesus that I'm talking about, we sang a song that there's none like him. That's truly, there's none like him. So if you're struggling today with anything, I'm almost done. If you're struggling today with anything, come to Jesus. His arms, is, his, his, he's open to you right now. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy burdened and late. I will give you rest. If you need rest, if you need peace, if you need healing, if you need deliverance, if you need joy, if you want to be glad, <laughs> you just want to laugh, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And I know that I'm talking to born again people, but somehow, sometimes we forget. 
we forget it. We get in our own struggle. We, we were in the struggle so long, we, we want to take up to fight ourselves. Uh, and we don't want to recognize uh, that Jesus is our shield and our exceeding great reward. We don't want to recognize uh, that God is our real God. We don't want to recognize uh, that he's given us angels charge over us uh, lest we dash our foot against the stone. Uh, we don't want to do that. We lose sight of it. That's why prayer, early morning prayer, I'm going to say early morning prayer, you do what you want to, it's so important. Because early morning prayer keeps me focused. Gets my focus on Jesus. Deacon Ron talked about, talked about praying in the spirit. And I love that, praying in the spirit. But the, the, the most powerful prayers I pray in the spirit is when I begin to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. When I begin to see him and all of who he is. What the Father has done for me through Jesus Christ. My God, the Holy Spirit rises up in me and he begins to pray. And I mean, I, it's so wonderful to me. I don't even know what to do. I just got to just keep going because I know he's praying. Praying the perfect prayer, the perfect will of God for me. So if I got to prime the pump, that's where I prime the pump. I go to the rock. I go to the rock. I go to the rock for which the water gushed out of for the Israelites. That same rock is in me. That same rock is in you. And he's a river flowing out of that rock. You see, we got to trust Jesus. We got to believe Jesus. I tell you, we got to lean on Jesus. We can't let him go. I tell you, I tell God all the time, I ain't letting you go. That was a time when I let him go, but I can't let him go no more. My life is in him. My life is in him. So whatever you're facing today, that's my message to you. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Say it with me. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. I love to call on Jesus. And I'm not just saying that. Hi, I tell you what, I have a witness sitting in the back, my lovely wife. She hears me pray in the spirit all the time. I'm riding along, I'm praying in the spirit. I can just be watching TV and start praying in the spirit. Because I tell you what, uh, because I need Jesus the Christ, uh, the only begotten, the firstborn from the dead. Uh, and I love it because he, he says he's a firstborn from the dead. Uh, if he's a, there's a firstborn, then there's a second. There's a third, there's a fourth. I don't know what number I am. I don't care what number I am. I'm born again from the dead. I'm born again from the dead. So I'm not going to tell you that it's just easy. It requires a press. It requires a press. And I'm telling you, you have to press. You have to press to Jesus. You have to press through all the muck. You have to press through all the mess. You have to press through all the fear. You have to press through all the doubt. And you have to believe Jesus. See, I'm not, I didn't just say believe in Jesus. Many people believe in him. They believe in the ideal that there's a Jesus, a son of God, but you got to believe on him. You got to put all your weight on him. It's what you have to do. I put all my weight, just like you are putting all your weight right now on the chair you're sitting in. I put all my weight on Jesus Christ. I refuse to try to hold myself up any longer because I tried that and I kept falling and kept falling and kept falling till I realized that I've got to put all my weight on Jesus. All of it on Jesus. Anyway, sorry for getting too excited. I don't know if you, Jesus is it. That's the only, 
That's the only message I have for anybody. That's the only message I, I if, 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 if the pastor allowed me to preach again, I, it'll be about Jesus. <laughs> you understand me? You know, if you, if you, if you, if you call me up and telling me you're going through an issue, my answer is going to be Jesus. I don't know anything else. I'm not trusting anything else. I've been down the road. I'm telling you, I'm not trusting anything else. My trust is in Jesus. My trust is in the Father. My trust is in the Holy Ghost. Now, did you guys get anything out of this today? I hope you did. This is my first time. Now, Now, the pastor said I had to do this <laughs> because I'm going to be ordained a minister. He said, no, you can't be ordained until you preach the turning point. I... So if you really want to hear some teaching, I'm going to say it again, Tuesday night. Tuesday night. The Holy Ghost opens up things on Tuesday night that you don't get on Sunday. I'm just saying that to you. And, and while I got this few minutes, I want to say something else before I end. Your redemption, your abundance, your prosperity isn't far off somewhere. It really, really, it isn't. I am now living in a word that God gave me about two years ago. In my prayer room, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me that Pastor Bones is going to ask you to go with him to preach. I didn't know, even know he was going to preach it. I had, I had no clue he was even going to preach it. And, but I said to God, God, I don't want this to just be me. You're going to have to forge this thing. I came to church. Pastor Bones said, Dick and Tommy, I want you to go over to this church with me. Can you go with me? I'm living in what God said to me that day, right now. Tuesday night for me, I'm living in because God promised me that he would bring a, a, midweek, a midweek service. I'm living in it. So I'm here to tell you today that if you're seeking healing, it ain't a far off. It's right now. If you're seeking prosperity, it ain't a far off. It's right now. If you're seeking truth, it ain't, it ain't a far off. It's right now. If you're seeking a, a sound mind, it ain't a far off. It's right now. If you're seeking peace, it ain't a far off. It's right now. You see, for some reason, we believe that the promises of God is in the future, and we keep it in the future, not recognizing that it's right now. Right now. This is the God we're in covenant with. That's right. We're in That's covenant right. with this God. He's a right now God. Right now. All we have to do is sell it forever to be true in our heart. What he said. We'll see it. We'll receive it. We'll walk in it. God bless you. <laughs> I want to thank everyone. Remain standing, if you will. We're going to close out. But first of all, we want to open up the floor to the church to anyone who may not be born again, who don't know Jesus as their Lord. You may have heard today he's a good neighbor. He is a good neighbor. He's a good shepherd. He's a good king. I said he's a good slave master and Lord. There's no way to the Father except through Jesus. So if you, if you are here today and you are not in covenant with God through his son Jesus Christ, we want to give you that opportunity with nobody looking at anybody else. Who would say, that's me? 
I want to know this Jesus that you're talking about. You know, if it's, it's just if it's anybody here with the raise of your hand, we acknowledge you, and you could be, and you, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you'll be born again. My God. So, is there anybody here? Come on up, my brother. Come on up. Thank God. Thank God. Welcome. What's your name? Eric. Eric. Erica. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today. For Jesus, I repent of sin. I turn around. I choose Jesus as my Lord. Fill me now with your spirit. And I receive newness of life. This I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Now, you know that we clapped. But there's angels that's rejoicing in heaven because a man on the earth has come into his place. My God. My God. Eric, if you would uh, follow the young lady right there, we'll get some information from you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Now, I don't know if I can do this or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. Go, go for it. The Word of God tells us what to do. He said, if you're sick, call for the elders. If anybody's sick today, if anybody got a physical, mental challenge, physical or mental challenge, I welcome you up today to come and have hands laid on you because of this Jesus Christ that I'm talking about. So if you are, the, the, the floor is open to you. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Now it's up to you, you have to choose. I'm not gonna beg anybody to do it, I'm just not gonna do it. Because I'm telling you today, Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the one who makes the difference. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got some people coming up. Can we get some people that are standing behind them? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Have hands laid on you. Have hands laid on you. Have hands laid on you. Pastor, that's... Can we get that? Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Now listen, as they're laying hands on you, it's just that. Yes. It's laying hands. They're going to heal you. Yes. They're not going to ask God to heal you. He's already healed you. Yes. By you coming up and them laying hands on you, you come into agreement yes. that Jesus yes. is the Christ and the healer. Hallelujah. It doesn't take a whole lot of talking. It's just yes. a laying on of hands. It's in the name of Jesus. Father, I lay hands on my, on my mother. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, Jesus. And I release peace to her now in Jesus' name. I give you thanks because your word never returns under you void. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on my sister in Jesus' name. And I 
thank you now, God, as peace and prosperity is released unto her now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the fullness of your word and her experiencing all the prosperity that you have for her now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I lay hands on my sister because you said lay hands on the sick and they recover. I thank you for the recovering that is now unto her in Jesus' name. Again, I release peace to my sister now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I release peace. Jesus said that when we release our peace, it'll, it'll, it'll remain on the one that's worthy. You have called her worthy now. And I thank you now, Father, for the full prosperity of healing, wholeness, spirit, soul, and body, God. This I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Sheila Moto Natale. Father, I impart into her now the spirit of the living God. You said we can lay hands and your people will be filled. I thank you now for filling this young lady. I thank you now for baptizing her in your spirit. I declare that she is fully immersed in the spirit of the living God in Jesus' name. And Father, whatever it is that may be trying to attack her, I thank you now by her obedience coming, holy God, and hands being laid uh, that is put to rest and she's made whole now. Now, in Jesus name hallelujah thank you Jesus 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 thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very good time.